Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are going to talk about Wave Engine. Now this is a game engine I've covered a couple of times in the past and it makes so little sense sometimes as we're going to see as we go through this. Now this is an engine with a heck of a lot of potential and some really weird questions attached to it. So let's jump in right away with some eye candy. Now the reason why we're talking about this guy today is there was recently an updated version. We'll get back to those details in a second. Like I said, I want to start things off with some eye candy and as you can see here is the engine editor in action. And what you're seeing down here, this is the uh, post-processing graph in action. So this is, you know, environmental effects and so on, and a preview of the results. Here is your traditional scene graph over here. So over here, you can see all of these various different effects that are available, which, by the way, you could go ahead and write your own if you so wish. And here is the composition graph that's going together to make them. So we got a number of things, SSR, fog effects, TAA, uh, camera motion blur and all this stuff they all kind of work together to give us this final image down here you can bring various different results in here and start working from them configure some really cool graphical effects with this guy so what you can see right off the hop is two things here first off this is a game engine capable of creating some really nice looking graphics and second is it has a very clean modern user interface. Now, I'm going to go ahead and shut this guy down because I have a couple on the go. We're going to switch to a different example in just a second. All right, there we go. So that one shut down. I've got a different instance running right here. This is with an MR Toolkit example, and this is designed to work with Microsoft HoloLens, uh, but it kind of just showcases a more complex uh, project, maybe not as much eye candy, but we can now do a bit of a walk around the editor. Over here, you can see we got the asset hierarchy. It's all the various different things in your game world. So if you've got special effects available down here, we can open one of those up, and what those just ultimately are is shaders. You can come in here, you got a real-time shader editor preview over here, assuming... Uh, your input type is correct and so on uh, we've got materials any material once again if you open it up you get a material editor where you can go ahead and configure various different values for that material uh, we've got models models can be imported in a variety of different formats including gltf and fbx so the biggies that you're going to expect right there um, this is mixed reality toolkit specific stuff uh, and then we've got scenes. Scenes are you know, what you're seeing right here. This is the entirety of it. Once you've got a scene open over here, you can see uh, the entity view, the outline view of all of the things, the scene graph, if you will. Um, it is a component-based engine. So if I grab something such as this cube here, it is, as you can see, made up of a number of different components. Transform 3D, a material component, and then obviously you can drill down into the material that's attached. Uh, we've got a mesh renderer attached, a box collider, rigid body 3D, uh, tethered placement. So that tethered placement is where we start getting into how you hook code up to this engine. Now this tool, what you're seeing in front of you, this is 99% for configuring your scene, placing entities in your scene, configuring up the graphics, you saw earlier the post-processing effects and so on, but your logic is actually happening behind the scenes. So if we go here and go to add a component, you can see here we have a number of different components. Now a lot of these come out of the box. You can tell wave engine dot, so physics 3D, a capsule collider, for example, provided out of the box. But we also come down here, you're gonna see some, uh, like this guy right here, this is custom code. Uh, we got another one here, Wave Engine, MRT, SDK features, and so on. These are codes that were made for mixed reality in this particular case. So how do you start adding logic to your Wave Engine game? Well, that is done via this guy. We'll open up our C Sharp editor of choice, which has to be Visual Studio 2019, by the way. And here we see how things are set up. So you've got your various different platforms. This engine supports a ton of different platforms. We'll get to that in just a second. Your editor side components, your demo side components, and then you've got your toolkit over here. So we're going to go into the demo. Uh, so here you can see a number of, oops, I'm in the toolkit. So here in the demo, uh, we can see tons of different bro broken down areas. So here example is behavior. So uh, hand interaction touch. This is some of the logic for handling the mixed reality code. And you can see it is derived from uh, behavior and then mixing in an interface from the, the mixed reality SDK. So you've got your various different callbacks like on touch, on touch started update so at various different times through your game's life cycle uh if you inherit from a behavior you get all the various different callbacks you would expect it's a pretty straightforward and common way of doing things at the same time if you want to add a special effect here for example is hollow land uh hollow hands sorry hollow hands is inherited from material decorator so you can go ahead 
or wireframe. Again, material decorator. So you could do that. You can also create your own components. So here, for example, is a color changer and it is inherited from type component. So those are then exposed back out to the editor and can be attached to various different things. And that is how your game logic essentially hooks up. And then you've got uh, your simple app skeleton right here. Generally, you'll never touch this. It's, it's pretty straightforward. It loads things up, starts up an example of your scene. So you see here, it's going to create a scene. Uh, create scene context, blah, 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 blah. Then eventually we're gonna load the scene. So it's loading the scene of type demo scene. Demo scene is created for you. Where did it go? It's here somewhere. There generally isn't much in it either. Um, and, and this is responsible. So here you can see different platform specific, different versions. So you got some of the things like setting up the local resolution and so on. But otherwise, it's mostly um, just kind of skeletal code or sca a scaffolding code for loading up your application. Most of your logic will be implemented by implementing behaviors, components, and so on. Here we see a drawable being implemented. It's inheriting from drawable 3D, and that will also be available back over here in the editor under, I think it's under, I forget where drawables show. They'll show up somewhere. So some of these things are, are implemented as code. And again, you come down here, you got some of your code that you created yourself it will be hooked up and available right here. So that is how you have logic attached to the entities in your scene. And that is kind of it. Cool thing here, totally customizable uh, editor. Uh, for example, I can come in here. So if I want, I can have set these guys to auto hide, have them collapse down the side like so. At the same time, I could grab something like this entity details. This is a little problematic at times, but let me find it. All right, here, let me just do it with something else. So we can take something like that, the scene here, and we can undock it. So I can move this off into other monitors. You got multi monitor support. And at the same time, I can come back here and dock back in so we can have a split view like so. So you got high customizability of the editor. It is nice, clean, and straightforward. Also, by the way, for those of you that like your light themes, there is a light theme available as well. I don't know how long this is gonna take, so just a second. Ooh, actually, uh, that may have just crashed it. So, uh, yeah, let's stick to the dark theme for now on. <laughs> All right, so that's a good time to segue over. That was a quick introduction to Wave Engine. It is a polished, useful, uh, functional game engine. If you're here for C Sharp, uh, the API is nice, clean, and straightforward. It is pleasant to work with. It is intuitive to work with. So what's so strange about it? Well, let's go back to that. So Wave Engine has actually been around for a while. I first did a closer look at of Wave Engine back in 2015. And at this point in time, it had started life in 2011. And you're gonna see uh, the user interface from back in the day. Yeah, we've definitely made some progress. Things have been split up. Things have continued to develop as time went on. Now, the interesting thing is it just kind of felt like it, it had gone away. Like back in uh, June of last year, uh, Wave Engine 3.0 preview was just released out of like the blue. It had been since 2018 since there weren't any updates. So you're kind of like, is this thing dead? But nope, it, it was still actively under development. And then we're going to get here. So now we're at the homepage of the description of what this engine's all about. And we'll get back to some weirdness in a second. But as I mentioned earlier on, you got a lot of platforms you can target. So you got Windows, Apple, Xbox, Linux, iOS, Apple, I guess that's Mac, uh, Android, UWP, HoloLens Connect, Gear VR, Vuforia, Steam, Mixed Reality, Leap Motion, Cardboard, AR Core, AR Kit, and Oculus. So they've definitely gone heavy into the VR segment, uh, but outside of the world of, uh, Let's see, Microsoft consoles. So the only thing really glaringly missing here are Switch and PlayStation. Otherwise, pretty much every platform you could think of is seemingly supported in there, at least the major platforms. Um, on top of that, we've got uh, uh, a unified API, virtual UI, advanced spectator view for mixed reality, leap motion support, uh, spatial sound support, and so on. So uh, that is the Wave Engine here. The cool thing here is if you want to go ahead and check it out, a couple of the really cool things, something I should have maybe started with, is that it's also completely free. Now where it also gets weird is it's free but it's not open source. So they're not making any money off of this. And a lot of the, the stuff is available, all this project examples are available on GitHub, et cetera, but Wave Engine itself is not open source. So it kind of runs into this weird, why do I use this category there? Now, another thing that is very strange is I'm here and you see Wave Engine 3.1 was released. Now, if I go here to download the latest version, I can also get a rundown 
of the previous version. So the, the history of it has been uh, 3.1 was just released, so it's available right now. That's why we were talking about it today. Uh, 2.5 was back in 2018. Uh, 2.4 was in 2017, uh, 2016 for 2.2, and so on. So we do have this big gap of time from 2.5 to now. Um, but the thing I also find really, really strange, there's no mention of 3. I think they may have just outright skipped it. And if I go to their uh, company blog, like so, because I wanted to go and find out about the 3.1 release, uh, there's nothing. The last post they've got there was about 3.0 Preview 4, which from the looks of the downloads page was never actually released. Uh, and this was back in August. So here we go. Oh, sorry, March? Yeah, so it's, oh no, I jumped over. Okay, so it was back in, uh, it was a while ago. It was back in August, I believe, that they last did their update. So there's nothing here on their website about the 3.1 release. In fact, the only place you will find any details about Windows 3.1 is on the .NET blog. Now, the relevance for that is because the Wave Engine 3.1 release is based on .NET 5, and they may be alone in being able to say that. .NET 5 was only really recently shipped. Uh, so if you want C Sharp support and .NET 5 support, so C Sharp 9 and .NET 5, Wave Engine may currently be your only option. I don't think Stride is up to .NET 5 yet. It's a work in progress. Uh, this is, uh, it's not even in the works yet for uh, Godot. They're still on the whole, uh, the mono train. And uh, Unity, who knows there. Uh, and Ditto, I don't believe that CryEngine is moving to .NET yet, at least not in, on their public releases. So if you're looking for .NET 5 and C Sharp 9 support in a game engine, Wave Engine may be the first and only uh, option out there. And the cool thing here is the new one should be actually quite a bit substantially faster. They're also using .NET 5 on all platforms, including the web. So in the web case, what they're using is a technology called WASM. Uh, WASM or .NET WASM has the ability to compile C Sharp code directly to WASM, uh, which is WebAssembly, uh, to run in the browser. So, and they also seem to work, and I'm not 100% sure I get the tie here, but it does seem like they are sponsored by or work directly with Microsoft. That's definitely why we're seeing things like the uh, uh, HoloLens directly supported here. And also, as we saw earlier in that first example, one of their new things is the post-processing pipeline. Uh, it is based entirely on compute shaders, and you can generally, there is a shader editor for compute shaders built directly in there as well. Uh, and you can see them in this this demo. I didn't actually showcase this demo because in my humble opinion, it looks terrible. And I, I don't actually know why. So that's why I went with the GPU skinning example of the dragon. By the way, if you want to check all of those uh, examples out, they're available up on GitHub. I will link to them and all the other relevant links down below if you want to go ahead and check that out. And if you want to go ahead and check out Wave Engine, it is available at waveengine.net. Now, again, this is a game engine that has a lot of potential. It's got a nice clean editor with a modern UI design. It supports the newest version of .NET and C Sharp. It's heavily useful in the world of virtual reality, and it has a nice programming model. On the flip side, it has a much smaller community than Unity, and it's not open sourced like Godot or Stride. So, I don't know what niche it's trying to fill here. For something that is completely free, it just makes a lot of sense to me that they should move towards open source on this one. Uh, but it's kind of a bit of a black box. New releases come out sometimes, and they generally are quite good. And I see this engine and go, oh, I want to check that out. But yeah, yeah, I don't know where to go with this one, to be honest. It's, it's, it's a very interesting engine, and I definitely recommend you check it out. Should you use it? Mm hmm. Anyways, that's it. Uh, that is Wave Engine now in version 3.1 with .NET 5 and C Sharp 9 support. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.